Can we get the slide up? <clears throat> Perfect. So the theme of today's, or this weekend's conference, has been content and context. So in the context of some of the adv crazy advanced technologies that we've seen over the last few days, I thought I'd share a few takeaways. One, I think I'm starting to get a little old. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I found myself saying things like, remember when? <laughs> Do you guys remember when you actually had to call people's home phones before cell phones? I think I was in middle school. And I remember when I wanted to call someone, let's say take someone out on a date, I had to go find my school directory, search for their home phone number in their phone book, and then you'd call. And those were the most tense 20 seconds of your life. Please don't let her dad pick up. Please don't let her dad pick up. And then, of course, he did, and you'd hang up the phone. <laughs> then came eighth grade. And for the first time, we all got cell phones. This was this magical promise. For the first time in our lives, we were going to be directly connected to anybody at any time. We were going to have technology that let us be close to anybody, have a meaningful relationship. But somewhere along the lines, technology got in the way. Social networks came about, and suddenly you were connected to thousands of people, people you had never met before requesting you on things like LinkedIn. Who are these people? Right? Instead of a great conversation, social networks have actually made us lonelier than ever before. For the first time at a great dinner conversation at a table, instead of talking, people are sitting there on the phones like this. This hit home for me pretty hard about a year ago. I was out at dinner with one of my best friends. And instead of a great conversation, we were being typical 22-year-olds. And we were sitting there on our phones, and I posted a thought on social media, and the first person to comment back was my friend across the table. <laughs> so at that time, four of my best friends and I sat down and we said, we've got to figure out a solution. Can we actually build technology that fits into the background of our lives? Can we actually build a phone that fulfills that promise of helping you actually connect with people? So what's wrong with the phone today? Can I, oh, there we go. That's, by the way, this is an unfortunate, typical scene that you see today. So what's wrong with the phone? If you think about how your phone, how all technology thinks about all the relationships in your life, the people that you've spent years getting to know, I bet you that I could figure out who the most important person that your phone thinks is in your life for almost everyone here. His name is Aaron. Not because you like him or you know him well, maybe you do, but because his name starts with A, A. This is how our phone thinks about people today. It's everybody in an alphabetical list, starting with Aaron, with mom lost somewhere in the middle there, a bunch, a bunch of duplicates and craziness, right? This is the world we live in, and we've accepted it. But what if we could build technology that actually sees the world through our eyes? that understands the context of real human relationships. And so today, I'm proud here at DLD, thanks to Steffi and Alessi and the entire team to announce human to the world. Human is your new phone. It lives right there on your bottom floor. Today I'm actually gonna show you a quick demo of just what human is like, what it's like to have a phone that's focused on being in the background of your life rather than the foreground. Can I switch to AirPlay? So when you open human, it fits right there where you're used to seeing it. You have the people you know the way you think about them. And just like on today's phones, you can call or text. In fact, you can just press and hold to call or text. That seems simple, but remember that today you've got five duplicates, one with a phone number, one with an email. Maybe you forgot to save it so it's somewhere hidden away. Now it's right there. There's his face. Let me call. Let me text. It's ironic to want to build a technology that disappears into the background of your life, that people forget about but use every day. And yet that's exactly what we've done. And it starts from the moment you first meet someone. So when you meet somebody, you open up your phone and you go to add contact. Your phone is already capturing that it's Tuesday morning in Munich. And when I get someone's email, 
I'm gonna use David's email so that I'm not giving away everybody else's email and you're all welcome to email him today. Let's say David and I just met for the first time here at DLD. Again, the phone is already remembering where and when we are. It's capturing this moment for us. When you hit next, can we now focus on building trust? Because everybody's had that awkward small talk, that annoying conversation where you can't get past their resume. But what if the minute you meet somebody, it goes, by the way, did you know that David was friends with Naveen? Or Alex Fiance or Daniel Porbaba? And suddenly you can put the phone back and start focusing on that meaningful conversation. And when you save it, it already remembers that you met at DLD. And I just want to get this out of the way fast, so let me quickly send him my information back. But because he's David, he only gets one of my emails. <laughs> and it's that simple. And now it's sent. And there's David. Now what's interesting is the one common denominator in all of your relationships is you. And so with human, we actually looked at the neuroscience of how we naturally remember people. And the way you remember people are things like, where did you first meet? Where did you last meet them? So we integrate that directly into your phone. We tie into your calendar, your email. We remember people by who we know in common. And not just random mutual friends, but the strong connections. So we've actually looked at the context and the strength of these relationships. And you don't remember people by their resume, but rather, who they worked with or where they worked. And so what happens if we can say, yeah, he works at Human with these people who we both know. You become the center of your phone for the first time. Now here's another problem. I'm really, really bad at remembering names. I wish I was better. But unfortunately, I sit here today scrolling through lists. I know his name started with D. I know. You remember everything about him except his name and you're sitting right across from him at an event and you just feel like the biggest asshole. <laughs> so what we've done is we've built a search engine that actually thinks about people the way you do. And so now when I look at David, maybe I remember him as the guy who works at Human, so I can just search the guy who I know who works at Human. Or maybe it's the guy that I met at DLD. And here, real quick, are all the people that I've met at DLD. There they are. That's magic. This is the first time that you can search your relationships the way you know them and find them in order of the relevance, the people that matter to you at any given moment based on what you're looking for. And lastly, everybody has that friend. One of my best friends and co-founders at this company is a guy named Jake. And he has this magical ability to always know when to reach out. It's never fake, it's never superficial. He's got all the context in the world somehow stuck up in his brain. So we tried to replicate it. <laughs> and what we've come up with is a contextual awareness of who in your life is relevant in the here and now. So when you open your phone, here are my friends who are actually visiting Munich right now. When I land in Munich, here are the people who I know who are already here. So it can show that the minute you land in a new city. If I've got meetings with somebody, put them right there so I can text them and say I'm running late. And if I've called somebody recently, put them right there as well so I can quickly reach out to them again. That's the magic of technology being in the background of our lives, letting us focus on real world connection and yet augmenting our lives in new ways. But there's something else that's really important to cover. Can I go back to the last slide? Where is that clicker? All right, so for all you Germans here, I know that the first thing you're thinking is, damn it, this guy's going to ruin all my privacy and take all our data. And that was the furthest thing away from what we were looking at. So when we started this company, our biggest fear was nobody is unhackable. It doesn't matter who you are, Google, Apple, Microsoft, somebody can get to your data, whether it's the NSA or a group of bad guys. So how do we actually protect our users? If we want to integrate with your email and your calendar and all this sensitive information, what do we do? So we actually developed what we call human rights. Can I switch this slide? Uh, one more. There we go. And these are what we call human rights for a digital era. This is a set of principles that every company can adopt that actually protects users' information by, for the first time, moving it back to the user's control. And so we've rebuilt this entire technology so that all of your data is processed on your phone. What that means is that your passwords, your emails, your text messages, they never touch our servers, ever. 
There's no traffic coming in out of the service. It's directly on your device. So even if somebody did want to hack us or the NSA did come to us, they can search around and all your information doesn't exist there. It's all local to you. And so we've actually open sourced this set of human rights so that any tech company can adopt this now and show that you can provide incredible value to users without having to sacrifice their privacy. And so today, as part of our soft launch, we're still very early in this company, very early in the product, we wanted to invite everybody here at DLD to get a first look at what we've been trying to do. And so for any of those here with iPhones, uh, iOS 7, you can actually go to human.com slash DLDVIP, and you'll be amongst the first people in the world to actually get to try this. And I encourage you to please help us figure out how we can make this even better. How can we as a company, human, build technology that fits into the background of your lives and augments it in ways never before possible? So that's all. Thank you, everybody.